What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It is your Earth Master here on this uh, beautiful Wednesday, October 6, 2021, 622 p.m. California time. And the latest quake out here on the Earthquake 3D Globes, 2.7 up in the Alaska region. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity uh, shows a little bit of diminishing uh, movement. But we are starting to see a little bit of uh, migration towards the west. Uh, at least from the Japan region westward in the parts of, uh, let's see exactly where this was at, I believe Afghanistan region, Pakistan. All right, hold on a second here. Let me jump on here, bring this window up, get a little bit better view. There's that 5.7 earthquake striking in Pakistan a little bit earlier. Uh, looks like they did have a, where'd that one go? Looks like they did have a, uh, <clears throat> a little aftershock there. Or at least maybe, yeah, at least one 4.6 a uh, couple hours after that 5.7. Pretty, I, I can't say it was really shallow. Uh, 20 kilometers for that 5.7, no doubt. Uh, quite a few folks um, filling that out there. But it is indeed in a seismically hazard area up in this mountainous region in Pakistan, just south of the uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan border. So what else we got going on out here along the... Uh, plates of the earth some movement up into the uh, it looks like Bosnia region 4.9 I'm not for certain if this is a, uh, a new quake or uh, it looks like it happened a little bit earlier ago let's see 4.9 16 kilometers deep for that uh, for that specific earthquake uh, the Atlantic looking pretty quiet even down there around the South Sandwich Islands we have seen uh, some movement into the South America region with a 5.0 near Argentina and also down here in the uh, just off the coast of Chile a 4.2 at 10 kilometers and a little deeper earthquake into the Peru Chile trench region with that uh, 4.3 at 110 kilometers below the surface uh, up here in the North American plate still kind of seeing uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity we'll drop all the magnitudes down here you can see a swarm of uh, earthquakes into the Intermountain West region, kind of stretching towards the Rockies uh, down through parts of Utah area, uh, and including some activity up in the Pacific Northwest. This is all due to the heightened movement pressure activity along the uh, western part of the North American plate, including the Cascadia subduction zone uh, with movement and pressure uh, kind of grinding the two together from the Pacific and the North American plate we did have some activity off the coast of Oregon into the Cascadia Fold and Megathrust Belt area. This region right here, and we do not want to see stuff out there, folks. Let me tell you, it would not be a good scenario. Uh, let's see if we can get this to pop up here. 2.1 well off the uh, coast. Uh, that's going to be this earthquake right here. Pretty shallow. Uh, it is within that subduction zone area, kind of about uh, the region where it's locked. A 2.1 at 4.6 kilometers and a little bit further south. Uh, still off the coast of Oregon, but a little bit deeper, a 1.9 uh, off the coast of Port Orford, Orford, Orford. There we go. Uh, 19 kilometers movement along the southern end. Uh, I'm not seeing any surface quaking, but this area, man, definitely. Uh, you know, we don't have to have a full Cascadia rupture to to create uh, some hazards out there. I was looking at the Building Seismic Safety Council 2014 event uh, they go through and and give scenarios of specific earthquakes and large magnitudes in uh, given areas. Uh, you know, can't say 100% certain that this is where large earthquakes can take place, uh, but they sure as heck do have it uh, loaded up that way, including some earthquakes off the coast of Oregon uh, with a scenario for a 9.3 earthquake, uh, full Cascadia megathrust, the whole Cascadia subduction zone, uh, with the largest branch here. So basically a, a full rupture. That's, uh, e. look at the date on that, 524, 2017, 21 kilometers. But we don't need a full, like I was saying, we don't need a full rupture of the Cascadia to um, produce some hazards out here along the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we could just go with uh, any of these other fault systems. And there's a lot of fault systems out here. And they got these earthquakes ranging from uh, uh, from lower sevens, um, far as uh, and then looks like a couple upper sixes there as well as far as potential seismic um, scenarios uh, kind of find it interesting here that they set this up that way um, what is this here big lagoon right we have seen some earthquake activity off here off the coast of northern california in the past 
um, but they put a 7.9 earthquake in this fault system here, the uh, Bald Mountain Big Lagoon Fault Zone. But the one we kind of want to watch, folks, is the, uh, the Cascadia there. We don't need a 9.3 earthquake striking within that region. I mean, that's kind of where we've seen this uh, little earthquake off the coast today, uh, 2.1. Pretty shallow, you know. It's we just we don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity out here, and with the amount of tremor that's been ramping up in this region, it's a little unnerving. You know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's normal." You know, it's like it's like you know people don't believe you until it until it happens. You know, it's 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 perfectly normal. You know, it's like, come on, give me a break. There's been a large amount of tremor. In fact, I messaged, I emailed a seismologist with the USGS today. His name is. Aaron Worth or Moridi, it looks like. Um, I emailed him asking some, some. Uh, I wanted to see what his input was on all the tremor that's taken place along the Cascadia, and uh, I got an immediate reply. But surprisingly, he's out of the office on maternity leave until January 2022. Okay, wow. Okay, it's just kind of odd. But uh, I will try to get a hold of some other folks there and see what they think about all this. As uh, far as the tremor activity today, I haven't even looked at that. But, uh, well, still kicking up. Still kicking up, folks. No doubt 550, or 550 epicenters of tremor. Basically within the same area of the uh, region of Cascadia that we've seen um, last night and the day before. Of course, last night, the bigger, the much bigger day with 900 and, uh, what was it, 9, 950. It's a lot of epicenters there, folks, along the Cascadia northern end and the southern end. Um, I seriously think something's brewing. I don't know if it's going to be the big one that pops up here, but as long as we got this trimmer, we're still continuing to build up quite a bit of pressure, folks, in this region. And some of these uh, earthquakes up here at the surface uh, are telling the story of what's going on down below into the subduction zone here. So, you know, who, who knows? It, it could trigger the big one or it may trigger an, an upper seven or lower eight with a, a, a slight a slight uh, southern rupture here, not the full rupture of the Cascadia, but then again, who knows? It could be years later, later and we see the uh, full rupture. But uh, as long as that tremor is ongoing like that, I got my ears perked. They are sticking straight up, and they're uh, kind of watching what's going on here, considering there's a lot of, a lot of people that live here in the Pacific Northwest. I live here in Northern California at the southern end of the Cascadia, but uh, if we get a 9.3, I'm going to be, uh, it's it's going to be some extreme shaking down here into the northern Sacramento Valley uh, and worse scenario for the uh, coastal range up and down the coast there, including a uh, tsunami, which would not be pretty. Uh, what else we got here, folks? So, yeah, just we're watching it, watching it pretty closely. As long as there's trimmer, I'm, like I said, I'm going to have my ears um Peeled? Is that the word? No, that's your eyes, right? Eyes are supposed to be peeled. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm paying attention. I'm watching it pretty closely, folks. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone activity real quick. It looks like we're still seeing some movement into the part of the uh, Yellowstone Lake right around the northern area of the caldera. Caldera is going to be this outline, the black outline there with the Lake Yellowstone included. But Mary Lake kind of sits right on that caldera with trimmer activity. Or not trimmer, but... Uh, uh, microquake earthquake activity continuing around this area of the park although not too much we're not seeing a whole lot of movement within the last hour or so uh, but still kick, kind of kicking up there in that region uh, other than that looking kind of kind of calm for the most part in that area aside from the little microquakes folks and then the idaho area sawtooth fault system still seeing some movement pacific northwest let's go ahead and check out the uh Volcanic activity here real quick around the Mount Rainier, Rainier earlier, Rainier seismograph. Here we go. See if I can spit it out. It's just been a fun day, folks. Been uh, enjoying the nice cool air coming into California. I think it only hit 70 degrees today. 70. And I uh, actually turned off my air conditioner the first time in five months. So five months of running my AC full blast day and night <laughs> kind of nice to open up the windows and has, have some fresh air coming in uh some earthquake activity uh, around the mount rainier area but uh, not uh not super active uh kind of kind of quiet in that region as well uh let's see what else we got here 
The Pecos, Texas region kicking up with a swarm of earthquake activity once again near Guadalupe Peak. Bunch of twos. Of course, all this activity, I believe, has to do with the fracking uh, or hydrothermal type operation, um, oil pumping operations and whatnot, uh, ultimately creating uh, crustal weak spots. Um, and, and not necessarily crustal, but five, six kilometer range where we're seeing these is the average for the... Um, the injection of their their whole process uh, up here in Oklahoma as well getting some earthquake activity probably around the uh, uh, the, um, the pumping operations as well a little bit of movement over here in the North Carolina region looks like uh, Kentucky Tennessee area excuse me 2.0 pretty deep 20 kilometers for that earthquake out there uh, also in the big island of Hawaii still looking at uh, an orange and watch for Kilauea volcano uh, getting a couple different earthquakes off the northwest coast of the big island seeing that activity up here it's kind of interesting to watch here 2.3 and a 1.7 uh, kind of uh, kind of just a little odd activity and down here in the southeast flank still looking pretty active a little bit of movement around the uh, Mauna Loa area but uh, no crater uh, earthquakes to report around the Kilauea volcano uh, let's see and some movements Fiji Islands Tonga, I should say, 5.4, and also down here in the New Zealand area. See, this is a this here is kind of interesting as well. This is 218 kilometers deep for this 4.6, right around. Can anybody guess what's around there? It is the Hikarangi subduction zone. This region right here, um, potential player in in creating a mega quake. Uh, this happens. It's not going to be a good scenario, folks. Kind of covered this. Uh, video a few months ago. It's, maybe it's been a year. I can't remember. Time's just flying by. But that's a pretty deep earthquake for this region. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's down there. It's definitely way down there. So we need to be on guard off the coast uh, covering this Hikarangi subduction zone there around the New Zealand area. Just be on guard, folks. Looks like that earthquake struck. Uh, see when that struck at, uh, looks like 07. So a couple hours ago. Um, yeah, 4.6. Just be on guard, folks. Be on guard. Let me tell you, that's kind of scary out there. All right, folks, uh, have a good day. Good night. Uh, I'm going to get uh, get my Wednesday night rolling, I guess. We'll be out here on the live stream just a little bit, kind of monitoring the activity around the globe. And uh, we'll see what happens here. A lot of interesting stuff going on worldwide with the trimmer. And, uh, of course, all the volcanic activity has taken place, too. Definitely an uptick in earthquake or tremor activity in the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, from what I can tell, as far as past charts go, there's definitely an, a major upward trend. And I think we're looking at a major upward trend of not only tremor, but earthquake activity around the globe. Uh, as far as larger magnitudes, six and sevens and eights go, it's been a very active year, uh, 2021. It seems like we're definitely ramping up. Uh, earthquake activity as we move forward all right guys have a good night we will chat you guys another time peace out everyone